Harvest Moon, or Story of Seasons as it's now known in the West, is probably the game most people think of when asked about farming simulators. More games of the genre began to emerge in the 2010s, but even before then, Harvest Moon wasn't the only farming simulator around. Separate Crossing was released in Japan for the PS2 in 2003, but wasn't exported and translated to the US until 2008. The game begins with your character, a wandering traveler, arriving in a low mountain village called Shepherd's Crossing. That's when you meet a girl named Claire, who convinces you to move into some empty farmland in the village and make yourself a home and living. You also have a talking duck named Brammy to help you, and he carries a bottle of wine on his back. While the game revolves around raising crops and livestock, that's really the only thing this game has in common with something like Harvest Moon. The game's four seasons are divided into Dandelion, which is erroneously listed as Daffodil in the game manual, Grape, Acorn, and No Grass. During this time, you can tend to your farm, and the game will only progress into the next day when you press L1. There are five chapters in the game's story, and you progress to the next chapter when you obtain a certain animal product or grow a particular crop. For example, in order to complete the first chapter, you need to obtain a rabbit and shear some fur from it. Your ultimate goal is to raise sheep, and live up to the town's name. Of course, it'll take some time before you're able to get those key items. There's no currency system, so in order to receive different items, you'll need to barter for them with the crops and livestock you grew on your farm. And unlike most other farming sims, you're able to, and are required to raise certain kinds of livestock for their meat. While it doesn't outright say that you're having them butchered, I think the intention is pretty clear. Crops don't need to be watered, and will simply grow with the passage of time. For some animals, you need to feed them certain crop food in order to produce their products. Thankfully, their AI is smart enough to eat the thing that's closest to them, so you don't have to worry about trying to force your livestock to eat a particular food. Crickets are a garden pest that will eat your crops and multiply if you don't get rid of them. However, that can be remedied by putting the crickets in an empty pen and letting them starve to death. Unfortunately, nothing can prevent marmots such as wild marmots and rabbits from periodically wrecking your farm. Luckily, you can get revenge on those little bastards by going on hunts. Some of the animals you can barter for are dogs. When you feed them meat, they'll grow up and can be registered to the kennel, and are then able to go on hunts. Hunting is a turn-based strategy game, where you can go by yourself, or be invited to go on a hunt by one of the villagers. There are various kinds of game that can be hunted, as well as various kinds of dogs that are best suited for certain tasks. So it's a good idea to have several kinds of dogs in your kennel so that you're best equipped to hunt certain prey. Not only can you obtain meat from your hunts, but you can also earn points that can be exchanged for certain farm items. If you're looking for a Harvest Moon-like experience, then you're not going to find it here, because live simulation aspects are pretty much non-existent. However, this is still a fun and challenging farming game, which requires a lot of strategy in order to produce the items you need for bartering and taking care of your livestock. The sequel, Separate Crossing 2, was released in 2010 for the Nintendo DS. It's also infamous for being one of the rarest and most valuable Nintendo DS games, and just a loose copy kit set you back nearly 200 US dollars. Separate Crossing 2 expands on the original game's formula quite a bit. You actually have a choice between a male and female player character at the start of the game, before you're dropped off into your new farm in Separate Crossing. As expected, you'll be growing crops and raising livestock for a living, and there's now a currency system in General Store where you can buy and sell goods. Seeds can be planted in the various plots of land on your farm during particular seasons, and the seasons are called by their usual names this time. You'll also notice on the top screen that there are pie charts on the plots of land, which indicate how fertile the soil is. The more green a circle has, the higher fertility, and the more planted seeds will be able to sprout. Little pro tip, you can get a head start on planting crops on the 16th of each season. For example, you can plant spring crops on the 16th day of winter. Seasons are 25 days long, and doing tasks such as sowing seeds and chopping wood progresses time, and you can also advance to the next day by holding the L button, so you're still fully in control of how quickly time passes. There are several types of animals you can raise, which will provide you various kinds of goods. One of these goods is meat, and unlike the previous game, they will try to hide exactly how you get that meat. In fact, you're actually the one that does the slaughtering. Yeah, you're probably not going to see that shit in the next story of Seasons. Various breeds of dogs are also in this game, and while there's no hunting minigame this time, they're still important as they help keep different kinds of pests away. Crops and animal products are more than just for selling, though. You'll notice you have a supply of main dishes, side dishes, and firewood. As the days go by, those numbers will deplete, and certain crops and animal products will replenish your food supplies. If any of those supplies reach zero, then it's game over. While strategy farming is still the main aspect of Separate Crossing, there is a bit more focus on socialization and life sim aspects. 
While you can't explore the town, there are times where you're prompted to visit certain villagers who will help you on your farming endeavors. When you cook certain dishes, you have the option of bringing your meal to a villager to share it with and they'll tell you a bit about themselves. It's a completely optional feature, but still a nice touch, seeing as how sharing homemade food is a traditional way of giving a sense of community. And whether you eat alone or with someone else, you'll be replenishing your side dish supply. Which is why having lots of hens is great, because you'll have a steady supply of eggs that can be made into omelets, which will keep you secure when it comes to keeping your side dish spin full. Sheep are one of the most important assets in the game, as they're essential in order to get married. Male characters need a large flock of sheep to present to the bride, while women need to make bed covers to give to their grooms. And let me tell you, making bed covers is a lot more time consuming than just obtaining lots of sheep. Granted, getting your hands on lots of sheep still takes quite a bit of time, since you can only buy three of them per year, and breeding also takes a while. But it feels like making bed covers takes at least twice as long. You have to shear the sheep and go through the whole process of turning that wool into yarn, and then get into a blanket. One sheep will provide you one spool of wool, and you need 11 of them to make a single bed cover. Not only that, but sheep will only provide you wool once per year during the spring. So it will take you at least a couple of years in order to make just one bed cover, and that's just the bare minimum needed for marriage. As for me, I decide to make two bed covers in order to marry Giles, the local butcher. However, he doesn't seem all that enthusiastic to marry my character. In fact, from what I've seen, none of the bachelors are particularly thrilled to marry the female player character, or the bachelorette's about to marry the male characters for that matter. I'm sorry I don't have great big tracts of land like Elizabeth, but you can at least pretend you care about me. At least he seemed happy enough on our wedding day, and seems content with married life to me. Your spouse will also occasionally provide you some money, and your supplies will deplete more quickly as well, seeing as how there's an extra mouth to feed. You'll sometimes see your partner doing various tasks around the farm and house, but you can't interact with them in any way. You do, however, see them at the dinner table when you're eating your meals, and sometimes you'll have a conversation with them. And after several seasons pass, you'll eventually have a child. Again, you can't interact with them, but you will have another person at the table. The series has had some activity since then, and the first game actually got a Switch port in Japan in late 2022. There have also been browser and mobile games, which as far as I know have only been released in Japan, and have the expected grinding and microtransactions. But I'd really like to see a proper return to the series. I enjoyed the darker and grittier variation of the farm sim genre, and it was a fun challenge to try to juggle farm responsibilities and trying to use each day as effectively as possible. I also think it would be interesting to see how more recent farming games could influence Shepherd's Crossing formula. So if you want something a bit different than the typical story of Seasons Fair, then I would definitely recommend Shepherd's Crossing, especially the sequel. Thanks so much for watching! If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click like, and subscribe if you want to see more.